All right, so we're gonna do a walkthrough of the Pro Tools Quick Keys PDF that I made for you. Let's start by looking at this little reminder list like your legend. So this is the shape for the command key. Uh, this is the shift key. This is the option key. It took me uh, like years to, to learn what that shape meant. This is the option, <laughs> option key. And then this like up arrow is the control key. I've already opened a Pro Tools session. First and foremost is Command N. That'll open the new session dialog so you can start a brand new blank session. Shift Command N though opens your make a new track dialog. So that's huge. So that's how you're gonna be building out your session with your different track types, etc. cetera. We've got Command O. That's gonna open up the open dialog, so opening up a previously saved session. Command S is your best friend. Do it often. <laughs> Save your sessions. Um, even though you have Pro Tools auto backing up every five minutes by default, you can get a lot of work done in five minutes and it sucks to lose any of it. So if you just uh, make it a habit to hit save pretty often, that would be a great habit to have. Command Q, like most programs, is the quit button. And Pro Tools always asks you before quitting if you want to save any changes, um, which is very nice of them. I make I make it a habit to, to always just hit save. Um, but keep in mind, any times you might not want to save it, like you just you know, open it recently and you did a bunch of stuff and you feel like you messed up and you want to start over, um, then you would definitely want to hit don't save so you can reopen your previously saved version. I mean, if you accidentally do it, you can always probably find, find a, a session file backup and find a previous backup before you messed up some stuff. <laughs> I have done that a lot. Spacebar, that's your play stop button. Obviously, that's it, play and stop. Wherever your uh, insertion point is, if you hit return, it'll send it back to the beginning. So it's always gonna start right at the beginning. T is your tap tempo. I'm just gonna open up my transport and show you um, one more time. You'd have to click on the beats per minute right there so it's highlighted. I'm tapping with the T, the letter T, to, to uh, check my tempo. So command equals, that's back and forth between your edit window and your mix window. You'll use that a lot. Command brackets. So the left bracket is to zoom in, the right bracket is to zoom out. I use this a lot. Fun thing about this command is wherever your cursor is, Whenever you press the zoom in or zoom out, it makes your cursor point the center of the screen. Uh, that goes for also if something is just selected, that, that's kind of, when something is selected, that is technically your beginning of your insertion point, uh, like your cursor. So um, if I zoom in and out, it's gonna focus on the beginning of that file that's selected. Command E is a big one. You definitely need this constantly. Um, Command E separates the clip into two files. So if I want to, if I'm comping, this is huge because I can just grab, um, like if I wanted to make this the lead or whatever and switch these two out, I could Command E. Um, and since I had a, a selection as opposed to just like an insertion point, it actually made a cut at the beginning and the end of the selection. So this might be a method of comping, you know, where you would slice something and put it right there. I'm gonna undo that though, because <laughs> I don't wanna do that. Command F, it creates fades. I'm just gonna delete these fades to show you. Yes, of course, you could use the multi-tool fade function and go like that individually, but if you wanted, uh, to like fade all your stacks, Command F would open this fade dialog. And here you can also change the shape of the fade if you'd like. I'm gonna use this one. And we hit okay, it makes fades across all of them. 
you would need to be at least selected on the outside of the audio file because if you were like right here and you hit command F, it's not going to do anything because we're not at the end of a file where something could be faded. Uh, you can do that as well for a stack of a stack of um, crossfades. So if I select this and hit command F, it's going to open the crossfade dialog which I would usually just go to this straight shape and do equal gain. Another option, um, sometimes I do a fade like this. If I want more of this second audio file to be heard in the crossfade, or I could make it go the other way, and then we'll hear more of this in the, this audio file, the first audio file in the crossfade, it would look like that. Um, you can even slide it around if you want it like that. So that's Command F. Command D is the duplicate an audio file. If you use this function, you'll always want to make sure you do it with a selection that is on the grid. So if I hit Command D, it duplicates it right um, on the grid in time. But if I didn't and I just selected the audio itself, it's going to duplicate it to the end of the previous file. And now it's not going to be in time with the music at all because it's just like a random point that I duplicated. Shift Option Duplicate is that function to duplicate an entire track. So the thing is you need a track selected. Right now I have no tracks selected. If I press it, I just pressed it. It didn't do anything. But if I selected, uh, if I select a track and hit Shift Option D, it brings up this this dialog, which is the duplicate tracks dialog. In here, you can tell it uh, which things about this track you want duplicated. Normally, I don't want the playlist because I'm just duplicating my lead vocal. I ran out of lead vocal tracks that are already bust and routed and I don't feel like doing a brand new shift Apple N, start a new track, then I'd have to do my busing and route everything from that track. So to avoid having to do your routing to send your new track out to its appropriate output, sometimes I'll just duplicate another lead track and then I'll rename it um, and it's already got the busing and stuff, but I'll probably not want the active playlist if I left the active playlist, let's do it to this one, shift, option, D. If I leave the active playlist, it's just going to duplicate this and it's just a double. It's just a, a copy of the lead, which you don't want. So you can see it, it's copied with the bus one and two already and it already has my auto tune on because it literally just copied the entire track. So here we're getting into some navigation stuff that can apply to more things. Anytime you hold the option key and you do some sort of an action, it does it to all of the tracks. Let me give you an example. If I hold option and I click solo, I'm soloing all of the tracks. Same with mute. One instance where that doesn't really apply is um, whenever you use option to set a fader or a knob back to zero, um, it only is going to do it to the one you're selecting unless you select these two tracks and do a shift option will do the action only to the ones that are selected. So shift option and then click, it's going to do it to both of them. Shift option solo, it's going to solo just these two. Okay, another example of option which I don't enjoy showing you because it's not something you can just undo. You can only undo like Apple Z things that are like edit related. Uh, you can undo fader settings, but you can't undo like a bus change. If I change this bus to say bus nine and 10 and I hit Apple Z, it did something else. It didn't do the undo this. So anything that's basically up here 
is not undoable. <laughs> and usually you can't undo things within a plugin either. Except I noticed you can undo things in the Melodyne plugin. If I was holding option and I changed the input on one thing to, to bus eight, it's gonna change all of the tracks that are mono uh, since these ones are stereo, these did not change, but uh, it changed all of my inputs. So try that out, get used to using option when you wanna highlight multiple things. Um, you would select the first one and then you would hold command to select the subsequent ones you want to select. And that same goes for deselecting them, just holding command. If you were to select one and then hold shift, it would select from there to there. Next is the control click on a plugin quick key. What that will do is just bypass it. Gray means it's active. Dark blue means it's bypassed. I'm gonna unclick that. So, same function. Does the same thing to just have it open and hit bypass. See, it goes to 180. Control, command clicking on the plugin does a hard bypass. Now it's grayed out. So this is not using any CPU power. It's not on standby, ready to go. You would then have to hold control command to make it fully active again. So this is a neat feature, not super important, but I find it pretty helpful when you're naming your tracks, um, which you can do by simply double clicking on the, the name of the track here. It opens the name your track dialog. So if I want to name it, you know, let's just change it to all capitals so I have something to do. Um, then from this dialog, if I hold command and I use the arrows, the arrow pads, not the less than, greater than arrows um, on the period and comma keys. I'm talking about the, like the number pad um, arrows left and right, up and down. So command uh, arrow to the right will go to, so now I'm on this track. And you could start naming your tracks faster that way by just hitting command arrow to the right, command arrow to the left will go backwards. So this is a big one for our delay issues that we're gonna run into. If you have a lot of plugins on, often you'll record and then you'll play it back and it'll sound late and you're like, I swear I didn't sing that late. That happens and it's a delay uh, compensation issue. Uh, means your computer is just not fast enough to keep up with all the plugins. So the reason we have this AZ button engaged is to so that we have access to this function when we are using a laptop. And it's simply, it's the period and comma buttons, which I find easier to think of them as arrows. Um, so it's the less than and greater than symbols on your keyboard that will nudge left and it will nudge as far as this nudge menu tells it to nudge if i had it like in bars and beats and i had it at a as a bar which i don't want you to do <laughs> so that'll drive you crazy it will actually nudge it a whole bar it just nudged at a whole bar we don't want that so i always keep the nudging menu on samples because that will give me the sam samples are a very sm very very small unit of time um, and a thousand samples is actually kind of a lot um, that's how much it's nudging I often have to switch it to 100 samples to really fine-tune that super helpful um, you'll also want to use that when you're comping if you find that maybe one of your takes um, you sang a little a little late and you want to just nudge it a little bit you just want to like nudge things around, get it really super perfect timing. Um, you would do that. Okay, so Command M, it mutes a selected clip. So not the, doesn't mute, it doesn't do anything to this. It actually, you have to have a, an audio clip selected and Command M will gray it out. And so that'll be silent. 
Command M does nothing else when no when nothing's selected. So Command G creates a group for all the currently selected tracks. So if I did Command G, I would make a group of one, and that's kind of silly. With that, that doesn't do anything for me. Um, you would want to make like a group for the leads, maybe. So I would select both leads, Command G, and this is the dialog. It opens up. So I just made a group without naming it, so it's called Group One. But you'll want to name it and choose your parameters that you want grouped. Fn. Uh, this is on a on a Mac. This is the is the function button. It's next to the Control Option Command buttons. Um, function return will open this new memory location. And the memory location is going to be created wherever your insertion point is. I'm just going to say maybe this is like the intro, right? So, and then here are the memory markers right there. Um, if you don't have this selected, you won't see them in your, <laughs> in your view. So make sure if you want to use that, that you have markers viewable in, in your setup here. Option command B is how you're going to bounce the whole song. I always recommend you make your selection of where you want the start and the stop uh, to be. Otherwise, if you did that, it would just bounce it to the end of um, your last file. And if you have any like reverb or delay tails going on afterwards, it's going to cut them off in your bounce. So I always like to select till a little bit after the track probably you can press play and hear it and then see where you like it to stop and then start your cursor there and drag all the way back to the beginning. We go over bouncing in week eight. So we'll go over what all of those details mean. Okay, so double click on a clip selects the clip <laughs> when you're in this uh, tool, this selector tool as opposed to grab, like if you're in the grabber tool, the hand, you just need to click it once to select it. But if you're uh, using this tool and you click it once, it won't do anything. If you click it twice though, it will select it as though it was the grabber, might be useful to you. Oh yes, we did go over, we did go over command click. It will just select additional tracks one at a time. Option click selects all the tracks. Hold the option and click it again. It'll unselect everything. Control click and drag is something I use constantly because I do record everything onto this top track, the record track, and then I drag it down to the track that I want it at. So um, say this was something I just recorded and I want to drag it all the way down here. If I don't hold control, I might accidentally, oh, like fall out of place. And then now I'm just not in the same spot anymore. So I would have to hit Command Z to undo that. But if you're holding control and you click and drag it down, even if I go side to side, it will make sure that it stays um, in the perfect alignment where it started. So that's huge. Shift Option 3 <laughs> is uh, an intricate quick key that I actually do use quite a bit. Um, and what it does is it consolidates a track. So see, I have lots of um, split clips. And say I just wanted, for whatever reason, let me turn this group off. For whatever reason, if I wanted this to feel like one solid file, I would do Shift Option 3, and it just made it one nice clean file. Um, unfortunately, if I go do other things, I can never undo that again. So if you're ever going to do that, uh, one thing I just recommend is making a playlist and just saving yourself uh, by using option and click and dragging just to save yourself a copy of it before you um, consolidate it. So if I ever am like, oh shoot, you know what? I think I did that crossfade not too clean. I want to go and fix it. If you've consolidated it and you didn't save us save it somewhere else, you can't retrieve that. So um, always keep a copy. Shift click when one track is selected and you shift click another track, it will highlight all the tracks in between. That kind of goes for uh, clips as well. If I click this one and then I click this one, it will just select this one and let go of that one. But if I hold shift 
while I click the other one, it'll select everything in between. And then here are some uh, not so fun quick key commands that I just, in my own experience, I accidentally hit these and I want you to know what they do just in case you accidentally hit them too. Uh, escape cycles through the tools here. So if I accidentally do that, I'm like, wait, ah, why do I need my scrub tool? This is a scrubber. Ready for me, baby, me more for me, baby. Which I never use because I think it's silly. I'll just hit play. I don't use this ever. Um, so escape cycles through. I don't know. I just bump it or something. <laughs> M is another nudge function that just confuses me. I don't really know what value that is. Maybe we could look that up. But all I know is I accidentally hit it when I'm trying to nudge just a little. This is me nudging with the with the less than sign. If I hit M, it nudges it like a lot more. And I don't know why. I don't want it to do that. So you might accidentally hit M and it'll nudge something further than you probably want it to. And that actually, it goes the same with the question mark key. If you hit the question mark key, it does it the other direction. And then I hit the N a lot accidentally when I hit my space bar. <laughs> Um, what N does is it just changes the way pl you your playback function works. The insertion, it's called like insertion point follows playback. Basically what it means is I have mine set up. So when I hit play and when I hit stop, this is still my starting point. But if I hit N, look what it does. It start, it makes this the new start point. So it basically changes it to set a new start point wherever you ended up stopping. So I don't like it doing it that way. So you might just realize that that happened. And then want to hit N one more time to, to go back to the old way. So. There you have it. Uh, those are my quick key commands that I use very often. And I hope this sheet is a helpful resource for you. Print it out, put it on your desk, and soon enough, you're definitely gonna have all of these memorized.